Okay, in this video, I'm going to have a look at the Sinclair ZX Spectrum and how to emulate that in RetroPie. Now, I'm using RetroPie 3.2.1, and the current one at the moment is 3.3.1, but in terms of this emulation, there's next to no um, changes that I'm aware of, so I won't worry too much about that. And it'll probably stand for future editions as well for quite a while, so um, hopefully, this video will hold up. Now, like I said, I'm using uh, RetroPie 3.2.1 on a Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, I don't think it's overclocked, but then it doesn't really need to be for this sort of emulation. And the emulator that I'll be looking at is one of the libretro based ones, and I'll explain that in a minute. But on the screen, you can see we've got Emulation Station fired up, and this is largely an untouched, not heavily configured RetroPie. It's just installed 3.2.1, expanded the disk space, and copied a couple of ROMs across. And that's basically it. So you can see, as soon as you've got ROMs across on the Raspberry Pi, that the Sinclair ZX Spectrum um, icon or logo an emulation station will show up. If you don't put any ROMs there, it won't show up. I'm saying that because that's quite a common question for a lot of the um, systems. The logos don't show up until you put the ROMs there. So looking at the ZX Spectrum, now when I had one years ago, um, I think it's still somewhere in the loft maybe, but um, I've got a 48K, so that's the rubber key one. And uh, then I had a plus two, which is the one sort of built in tape recorder. But that's the, the sort of Sinclair I remember, and uh, the rubber key setup. And obviously, when you had a ZX Spectrum, you inherently always had a keyboard. And that's important from an emulation point of view because quite a lot of the emulators, like whether it's Super Nintendo or PlayStation, you play those with, you always play them with a joypad. They, they, you know, it's rare that you get an add on like a keyboard for the actual game. But with the Sinclair Spectrum, you always had a keyboard. So you've got to bear that in mind for emulation and how practical it is to use a joypad when all of the games. Now, quite a lot of the games might just be left, right, jump, in which case a joypad can do it. Um, or maybe up, down, left, right, fire. And again, it's okay for a joypad. But some of the games either had quite obscure key mappings, like uh, maybe it wanted one to five and then it wanted M, N, Z, X or something weird. Um, which can be quite convoluted to map to a joypad. Quite a lot of games you can do it, you can custom map um, some controls and I can show you um, how to go about that, but it's often a bit too much more hassle than I think it's worth. So for the Spectrum, I think you will get a lot more out of it if you accept that some games are just easier with the keyboard. So um, yeah, bear that in mind. You can get really quite um, mini keyboards. There's um, a lot of that actually. I've got one here and one that's quite common is it's just under 11 and a half inches wide which is you know it's not too big at all really. It's quite practical and quite portable so you know don't worry about a keyboard getting in the way too much but if you want to emulate ZX Spectrum I would recommend having a keyboard handy just to make um, all the games available or you could just stick to the ones that are really easy on a joypad. Anyway right Back to the Spectrum. Now here, I've just put a few games up there, and you can see, I'll show you in the back end of the minute how to get these on there, but I'm not gonna go into copying ROMs because that's a separate video. Um, how to get them across to the Pi is um, covered somewhere else. This is just uh, some of the ROMs that I've copied across. And um, you can see it's mostly the classics. You've got Dizzy, um, Gauntlet, Goldman, Harrier Attack, Horace Goes Skiing, uh, Manic Miner, of course. Uh, megabucks and uh, you know you can just pick and choose that now there are literally hundreds upon hundreds of uh, spectrum games available so you can grab whichever ones you want but I've just selected uh, a custom few there and we're far at Manic Miner although that that cover art isn't the cover art I remember so obviously there's some alternative covers and I scrape these not with the um, S self scraper which I usually use for just about everything because it's great at scraping but um, I use the inbuilt scraper for this one, and it doesn't have a great hit rate with Spectrum games, but it gets some, whereas at the moment um, the SL scraper isn't configured to get Spectrum games, so I've not got all the details there. Okay, so what we're going to do, when I hit Manic, when I select Manic Miner, I'm going to go into the Run Command menu just to have a quick look at the um, options, and I can do that by either hitting the uh, X button on the control. Um, is that X? Oh, so long. Yeah, I think it's X. Or you can just tap X on the keyboard, um, or I think C is the alternative, or M. So I select this, get the run command coming up, tap a button. It was 
Okay, so it's the A on my um, joypad. But the important thing here is you can see you can select the default emulator. And this is the same for all of the systems. So it's useful menu to know is there. And I rarely tweak many of these options because the defaults are usually pretty good. But it's worth just being aware that um, you've got some options to choose and change the default emulator. Now you can see here currently the default emulator for ZX Spectrum is LR Fuse. When you see LR, that means Liberetro. So it's a Liberetro core loaded in RetroArch. Now the advantage of using Liberetro cores means that it will run in RetroArch, which means that all of the RetroArch configuration files can be used. So I quite often find if this type of emulator, if a Liberetro based emulator um, or core works, it's good to stick with it. And I'm quite happy with this one, so I do tend to stick with it. But if I choose that as an option, you can see by default, um, you get uh, three other emulators, because that's just the uh, same emulator with a different flag. Although, um, by default, you probably only get Fuse 128, Fuse 48K, and um, yeah, FBZX should appear. Now, I get this fifth one, which I don't think is there by default because I've installed it out of the experimental section, and I'll show you that in a moment. But after playing with them, I wouldn't say there's necessarily a big advantage over that one for general use. Um, it's a good emulator, it works well, but I haven't really found it having a massive advantage over the, the default LR fuse. So I'm going to run with this one and that's what I'm going to show you the configuration for. But obviously you're welcome to use the non liberatory version there, um, which defaults to 48K Spectrum or 128K. Um, FPZX, different one, or um, this one here. Now bear in mind, if you do use a different emulator, the configuration files are going to be different, so don't expect it to use your RetroArch configured controls. But uh, put simply, keep it default and it should be fine. So I'll keep that and I'll launch it. Now, <laughs> apologies if that sounds a bit grating, but I'm sure it sounded good in the day. Now, you can notice that as that booted up, suddenly an overlay went over it, and I've got a sort of flaky-ish scanline overlay to try and make it look a little bit older there. Um, but that's optional. You don't have to have that set up. You could just have it clean. So without that, that type of scan lines going across it, um, it's quite easy to take out, and I'll show you how. But... Um, this is a good example of a game that works with a joypad. So if I press start now, or um, one of the fire buttons, there we go. Now I'm using a joypad that I haven't done any configuration with other than set it up with RetroPie. And you can see it's quite happily going left, right, and jump. And that's all the keys are in this game. So it looks great with a joypad. No extra configuration needed, it's just plug in and go, oh, just plug in and go really. The keyboard can work at the same time, so I could uh, pick and choose between which control method I want. I might have to complete this level now. Okay. I think it's probably quicker if you go right there and then back the way I came. But this will do it. There we go. And to quit out, because it's a RetroArch based um, emulator, you can use the standard quit keys, which hold select and tap start. So that, oh, and you saw briefly the overlay pop up because select to bring the keyboard overlay up. But yeah, that's, that's essentially it. Put the ROMs across, select to run them, and they will run. And the issues come with if you're trying to play a game that's really reliant on a keyboard, but that's where you can set the um, controls. Now I'll fire one other game up to show you how those, the keyboard and joypad controls can conflict or you can choose to sort of set them 
correctly. Let's go for um, Treasure Island Dizzy. Fire that one up. Okay, now I've got my joypad set up as a Kempston joystick, so I'm just going to try that a second. Press it says at the bottom here, press K for Kempston, and just see how that. Yeah, that works. Okay, so let's jump. Yeah, that works pretty well actually. So I've got button B for jump, which is the same as pressing up because the B button I think is mapped to up. So jumps and B jumps, and my fire button is the, the the fire button on the joystick because I don't think um, with the Spectrum when you had a joystick um, you ever had more than one fire button and if you did it did the same thing so I think I'm right in saying with the Spectrum you only get one fire button but yeah that works really well with the joypad actually so that's not a problem but if I go for the keyboard yeah I can still use a keyboard uh, if I knew what the keys were but anyway um, yeah, that works well. Now, because it's RetroArch, we get the Algui, which is another menu option as well. So I hold the select and tap X, and you've got here the um, RetroArch menu. And what we're going to do is go in the quick menu and check the core options. So you can see here some default options for emulating the Spectrum. Um, the model you can emulate based on 48K or 128K plus 2, etc. I think that auto detects on the ROM. Could be wrong, but anyway. Uh, hide video border. You can make this screen smaller so it doesn't maximize um, all the size there. And then tape fast load disabled. I think you have to have a .tap file or ROM for that to appear. I'm using .z80 and I don't think that appears, but if you did, you'd get all those um, lines that go <laughs> when it loads on the side but uh, yeah I haven't got that but anyway there's some defaults with the system you don't need to change those so I won't worry about those but what is interesting is the controls so if I go to uh, go back a menu and settings and input you can see here um, there we go hang on um, wait is that what I want Okay, that threw me, yeah, unknown. I don't know why it says unknown, because that should be Kempston. So the options you've got there are cursor joystick, Kempston joystick, um, Sinclair 1, Sinclair 2, Timex, and so on, and none. Now, you get a different option on the third player. I don't know why they said unknown, because it was emulating Kempston quite happily. Bit weird, but anyway. Um, let's put that back to Kempston. Now... It says obviously the Kempston is my joypad that I've got plugged in. And player two, I've set to none because I don't need a control for them. Now, even though it says player one, two, three, they're all available at the same time. So down here, I've got um, use the three device type Sinclair keyboard. I set it to the keyboard to give me all the options. Um, on a given game, I've got keyboard access. Now, if I was to turn that to none obviously I, I couldn't get the keyboard to work which um, maybe you want to set it that way but um, it's important to note if you go here and instead of choosing Kempston joystick you choose something like cursor joystick although that might get more games working on the joypad because the up down left right would emulate the up down left right on the keys for the spectrum which I think was five six seven eight it will conflict with the Sinclair keyboard and it means that the keyboard then doesn't work on certain keys like um, I think the A key doesn't work and the D key because that should be the left and the right but the upshot is you'll get conflicts if you try to emulate a key, um, too many joysticks and keyboards at the same time so basically the good combination I find is either turn this to none and just use a keyboard and then you know you're fine it's just using the keyboard no problems but if you want your joypad to work with some of the games try changing this to Kempston and I think you get the best compatibility with it not conflicting with the keyboard. hope that made sense. Anyway, I'll show you in the back end in a minute how to set that up because when you make changes in the Argui it won't automatically save unless you make a, um, a sort of slight change which I'll show you. Um, but that's where you can see what's happening. Like I said, I don't know quite why that said unknown because it was working fine. Um, yeah, a bit weird. 
Right, okay, back to using content. And that's that's what pops up when you press the select key, the overlay. So you can here, you can see it, I could type a button at a time on particular games just with the joypad, but that could be really laborious if there's a load of keys to press. So not necessarily the best option. Um, I think the sim on the spectrum you had a symbol shift key. It was next to the space key in red. Actually, it's uh, there, symbol shift. And symbol shift on the keyboard, on a normal keyboard, I think is the alt key. So, um, you know, it's all emulated on the keyboards, fine. So you can uh, get, oh, there's the up, down, left, right, five, six, seven, eight. You can see there, they've got the arrows, which is really weird using a keyboard, up, down, left, right, all on the same row. It's not very intuitive, but that's what it was. Okay, so put the ROMs on there, run the emulator, it runs. And you can see here again, you've got my um, sort of scan line overlay. So there are um, some lines going through that text just to break it up a little bit, but that's all optional. Um, yeah, in terms of the emulators, I'd stick with that default LR fuse, the retro fuse one. It seems to work pretty well for me. Um, games work well. If we quit that, we could fire up another one. I'll just see what the settings are. Um, I think Chaos might be a half decent option here. Um, where is that there? Chaos. Tense of this, I'm pretty sure my joystick won't. Yeah, I mean, how many wizards? I can't do that on my joypad, so I'm going to revert to the keyboard and I'll say uh, T level of computer wizard, uh, T player name. Uh, okay, so I'll call myself. Oh, okay, so right shift brings up the overlay as well, so I use the right, left shift. Computer control, no, which character one? Color one. Oh. Okay, um, let's just select a spell. A giant rat, that sounds good. Illusion, no. And continue with game. Now, this game is a lot better than it looks. Anyway, giant rat. Now, if I get my joy, uh, joypad here, I'm getting nowhere with it. None. Pretty much none of the buttons do it. The shoulder buttons are enter and space, so it does try to get a lot of buttons, but I can't move up, down, left, right, because that's not doing it, my buttons aren't doing anything. So it's not that practical for this game. Even if I changed it to a cursor joystick, I don't think that would work, because on this, I've got the keys are like A, D, well, all the ones around S, basically. So, You've got um, the directional, the diagonals down all around S. And if I want to cast the spell, I've got to press S. So there we go. So basically, um, if you want good compatibility, get a keyboard. Um, I'll quit this. Okay. And there you go. Now I'll just drop into the back end to confirm a few settings, but uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to get this up. Just get some ROMs and. Um, put them in the right directory, fire it up, and you should be away. Um, decide whether you want joypad or keyboard or both, and it should be okay to set up. Anyway, if you've got any questions, do put them in the comments or on the forum, and I'll try to help. But now let's drop into the back end, and we'll just make sure you can see what's going on there. Okay, this is the second time I'm doing this bit. Uh, first time I forgot to press record for the audio, so that wasn't much use. Hopefully this will be much better with sound. Um, okay, so we're quit out of emulation station with F4 to get to the um, Raspberry Pi uh, command line interface, or you can do this remotely using Putty, but whatever method you want to do, you can uh, just get to the, the back end of the config for all the emulators this way. So what we'll do, we're looking at the Spectrum emulator, the ZX Spectrum, and in the directory that we start in, which is HomePy, if we change directory to RetroPy and then change directory to ROMs and we want to go into the ZX Spectrum folder, you can see there, that's where I've put all the ROMs. So mostly mine are .z80s and I've got a .tap there. So I put all the ROMs there. There's plenty of information on the wiki and other videos about how to get ROMs across to the Raspberry Pi, but uh, once you do, this is the folder that you put your Spectrum ROMs in. So it's, um, I type PWD. It's HomePy, RetroPy, ROMs, ZX Spectrum. And as soon as you put your ROMs in there, then the logo will appear in Emulation Station. And that's all you really need in that folder. 
and just put them there. And what we can do, <coughs> excuse me, because um, Emulation Station will only show certain extensions, just to confirm which ones are okay. Uh, there is a list in the wiki, but also you can verify by looking at this file, which is um, if you type nano for the text editor, and in this folder, Emulation Station, uh, there's a, a file called es underscore systems.cfg. If you hit enter there, we're not going to edit it at all, we're just going to read it. And I'm going to find a particular section with control and W. That brings the search option up down the bottom here. And I'm going to search for ZX spec. Hit enter, and it's taken me to the bottom of the file. And it just confirms that here are the acceptable extensions. So if the file or the ROM has this extension, then uh, it will show up. And from this point, it just repeats the same in uppercase. Um, I'm not too sure why there isn't a dot preceding the SNA because you've got uh, everything else should be dot but there's not one there um, if you do have a problem getting SNA files to show up you could try putting a dot there like I said I'm not too sure where there isn't one anyway um, my files are dot z80 and dot tap so they're showing up fine and dot tzx is quite popular format as well so I imagine most of your ROMs will be in one of those formats but this is just um, what emulation station will show you so if it's in that format it will show up Okay, so we quit out of that with Control X. Now, um, let's look at the config area for the ZX Spectrum. Now, as um, I showed earlier, I'm using the libretro core for RetroArch for the ZX Spectrum, which is LR Fuse, but there are other options. Um, but to show you where all of the options are, if you change the directory to apt re oops, retropy configs and ZX Spectrum. In there, you've got uh, emulator CFG file, which will just confirm which emulator you're using. I wouldn't suggest editing that from here. You're better off using the run menu we saw earlier. And there's a wiki page on the run menu if you need more details. And the retroarch.cfg will be used if you use a libretro core. If you use a different emulator, it won't be looked at at all. So we just quickly have a look at the emulators file. And you can do that by typing nano and emulators.cfg. And you can see here the default is set to LR Fuse, which is libretro fuse. So libretro fuse is here, and when it's run, it will do this. It will run retroarch, and then it will pass in the libretro call there for fuse, which is this file, and then it will pass a configuration file in, which uh, we can see here is in the configs in the configs directory ZX Spectrum retroarch.cfg, and then it runs it. And you can see the other emulators here, Fuse, FBZX, and the experimental one that I've installed here, which I'll show in a moment. Um, they run uh, themselves, basically. So if you run FBZX, it runs this executable file in this directory. It does nothing at all to do with RetroArch. So changes or configuration you've got in your RetroArch setup won't apply here. Now these other emulators might work better for you. It's You can always easily try them out using that run command to change your default emulator. But um, I've stuck with that one and I'm fairly happy with it really. Okay, and because I'm using the libretro one, I can use the retroarch CFG. So I'll just edit that. Okay, now the first five lines are purely me, because your file will have this, it won't have this in. It'll have this line here, it'll have um, this line here and it'll have this line here it won't have this section so all I'm doing here and these five here are basically adding in that scan line so if you want to check out how to add overlays there are other videos about that but essentially I'm just adding an overlay here this is what this process is doing which gives it that scan line effect but that's nothing to do really with the emulation it's just an aesthetic change that I want to do so that's what that does now down here these lines are um, something more specific to do with the configuration that I want to save and you saw earlier <clears throat> you saw earlier where I changed the control method for the spectrum so um, I chose Kempston joystick which is number two um, I always want that defaulted and the player three I chose a keyboard which is um, option number three so I'm telling it every time to start when it starts that emulator to have a Kempston joystick configured and a Spectrum um, keyboard set up. Now you don't have to have those in and it would just default to um, its own settings which I think by default are um, maybe cursor joystick and, um, and no other controls. 
which might work better for you but if you want to override you just put these commands here two is Kempston zero is none and three is a keyboard you can't have a keyboard on player one or two um, and I'll put a link to the emulator details as well she's got quite a good readme on the configuration of that Liberetro Fuse emulator but um, the reason I've got those three files there I want to hard code the well not hard code but set the um, inputs for them so uh, if you did that in the Argui where we looked earlier and just press save on those settings it wouldn't put them in this file and I've got another video on saving Argui settings so if you want to see how to do it a bit more manually or um, in more detail do check that video out but in essence this is a um, quick and easy way to hard code the uh, not hard code to set the controls you just put um, the numbers in here so it works best for me saying player one is Kempston player three is the keyboard and that's it really that's all you have to do and this bit's optional in itself and this bit certainly is it's just um, putting the scan lines in um, then you're away and playing them really that's that's all there is to it I'll quickly show you where the um, experimental section is for the spectrum emulator if you want to try that that other option we saw that here um, I don't know how you pronounce that Z Z Sorex Z Sorex um, but that or Z E Sorex but that emulator isn't installed by default it's in the experimental section but it's easy enough to install you just type sudo and you can do this from any sort of location on the on the pass sudo forward slash home forward slash pi uh, retropi hyphen setup and retropi underscore setup.sh and that's the the retropi setup script so if you hit enter there you'll get the script up and I'm going to choose four experimental packages and you see down here on um, that option there there is that ZD Sorex uh, ZX Spectrum emulator press enter there it'll get installed and um, you'll probably need a um, internet connection when you do that and just so it can download it and that configure it and do everything for you so you can choose that in future if you want to um, it's still being tested at the moment so there might be a few um, issues with it maybe but uh, when I tried it out it certainly seemed to work fairly well but like I said I prefer the Liberetro ones which is why I've chosen that but that is pretty much it the main like I say the main configuration area if you if you want to do anything to that is this directory here apt retropi config zx spectrum and that's where you've got your retroarch.cfg file but um, it should be ready to go simply by copying the ROMs across and um, configuring them Personally, I'd be tempted to set it up with um, a keyboard only, just so you've got full control over the over every game. It's not going to get conflicted or confused with different settings. You know, it's always going to work with the keyboard. But um, putting Kempston as, as player two should, certainly shouldn't um, cause any issues. That's largely it. If you've got any questions, please put them in the um, in the comments in the video and I'll do my best there. If you've got quite an involved question, you're probably better off putting it in the forum. If the video helped, please click the thumbs up. Um, if it didn't help, click the thumbs down. But um, overall, I hope you got something out of it. Thanks very much.